well, this is what? Question. Um, or total. So what we want to do is we want to graph the sine function, guys. And if you can remember, whenever we're graphing our functions, guys, I need you to stop what your previous notes were, what I told you to write down. Let's just stop doing that. We're going to get back to graphing those in just a second. So if you guys can just go back to uh, your homework that we can go through so we can take our homework quiz. When looking at this, um, remember, guys, there's a couple points that we need to make sure we figure out. First thing is finding the amplitude. You guys remember that amplitude is when we take our A and find the absolute value. So I'm going to say, remember it's the absolute value of A. So A is the number that's in front of your function. So I look at this and I say, well, 4 is my number. 4 is my A. So I take the absolute value of 4, which is going to give me 4. Remember, what that tells you is that's going to be your distance from your x-axis that your graph is going to go. So my graph is going to go up 4 and it's going to go down 4. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Now remember, this is the sine function. So if you guys remember the sine function, it crosses at the x and y axis you know, without any translation. So it's the distance from our x axis going to go up and down 4. Then the next thing we need to do is figure out our period. Now, if you guys remember, a period is how long it takes your graph to complete one whole cycle. So there's a formula for period, which is 2 pi divided by b. So we need to figure out b is your number that's in front of your x, of your function. So I look in here and I say, well, pi is my number in front. So I write 2 pi <coughs> divided by pi. Those cancel out. Equals 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, let's go out to here, and say that point is 2. Okay. Ah, I'm going to break up in just a second. So I'm going to say my graph is going to complete a whole cycle at 2. Now, there's a couple points that we need to remember about a sine function. A sine function has four important points, right? It has, remember, if you guys can kind of think of it, it goes like this. There's a point where it crosses the x-axis. We have a maximum point, and we have a minimum point. So those are what we call very important points. So we have four important points. Where the max, the intersect, the minimum, and where it ends. So how do we get, how do we find out those points? Well, what we can do is we can take our period and divide it by four. That ends up equaling one half. So what I can say is each increment is one half unit between each other. So the first increment from zero to one would be one half. Okay, one half plus one half is going to give you one. And then one plus one half is going to give you <coughs> Three halves. Okay. We try to leave it in fractional form. We know you know it'd be like 0.51, 1.52, but let's try to leave it in fractional form. So therefore, you guys can see, and I'm actually this is going to be down here. So, so what you guys can see is those are our important points. So it's very very helpful if you guys can just find the period, take your period, divide it by four. That is going to be the increments before those. Now, if you guys remember, I told you to write down the parent graphs, right? So you guys know exactly what sine's gonna look like. So sine's gonna go up, cross, minimum, seven. <coughs> now, your gra or your homework says to do two periods for a little bit, right? Well, if you guys remember, if you figure out what your intervals are, all you're doing All you guys are doing is just adding more intervals to it. So that's going to be back up max, down below. Okay. You could also go in the neg. You could also go in the negative direction. As this graph, you know, continues both infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. Okay, so that is how you graph. Oh, I forgot to do this other one. So now, if you guys look at this, so here's that one, four sine pi of x. Now, if they want, what do they want us to do is graph this exact same graph, but minus three. If you remember, whenever we have a minus three, since it's outside of the function, it's not inside the parentheses, it's outside the function, which is our d. Remember, our d tells us to shift the graph up or down. So since it's minus three, I'm gonna take this whole graph and go down three units. One, two, three. 
So now I'm going to go up four, one, two, three, four. And down four from there, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to have the exact same graph, except it's going to be between these two parameters. So I'm going to go from here, I'm going to cross there, there, and back up to there. So it's going to look something like this. perfect graph but you guys can see the exact same thing all I did is I took this graph and I shifted it down three okay that's what the plus D since it's a minus three I'm going to shift the whole graph down three units does everybody see that yes all right anybody have any questions on that yes um let's say like you know you divided it by four is that because it, that's what the um amplitude was nope I divided by four because there's four important points okay. the end of the period the minimum the inter intercept and the maximum. So it's always one. You're always going to divide by your form for your sine and cosine. 